Baker to Spangville Studios in Marville, England. We have a very interesting news report for you today. Robert? Yes. Thanks, Doris. The water cycle is the new hot topic in most of England. We have received many emails from the newspapers this week stating that the water cycle is the most talked about. Doris? Thanks, Robert. Today we'll be showing you the different parts of the water cycle. You may be surprised to know that this is happening all of the time. Evaporation, condensation, and precipitation are the main parts, but there are a few more to add. These include transpiration, infiltration, or percolation, runoff, aquifer, and discharge. I'm now going to throw it over to Robert at Clare Lake, where evaporation is taking place. Robert? Here by the lake, you can see some extraordinary things happening. Look here. Evaporation is happening right now. The water from the lake is heating up and turning into water vapor. It is rising and starting to get high in the sky. On my way back to the studio, Doris is headed up into the clouds. Up to you, Doris. Thanks, Robert. Look at this view. I'm in the clouds right now. There's a lot of condensation happening. In fact, clouds are made of water vapor that has started to condensate. The water that has evaporated is now cooling down and turning into condensation. The condensation builds up and up until finally it gets so heavy it starts falling down in the form of liquid called precipitation. I hear Robert is down by the subway station where it is pouring rain. Let's fall down to Robert. Wow, it is really raining out here. This is precipitation. Precipitation is when some form of liquid falls from the sky. It can vary from sleet, snow, hail, and in this situation, rain. The rain is getting even harder, so I better turn it over to Doris underground at the gardens. Doris? While Robert is getting a new pair of clothes, I'm going to talk about transpiration. I am now underground by this tomato plant root. Although you can't see it, water from the ground is being sucked up into the root of this plant. The water will then go up into the stem and out through the leaves into the air. Transpiration is truly amazing, but not as amazing as infiltration. I'm going to get out of the ground while Robert tells me about infiltration. Robert? Thanks, Doris. Infiltration is really something. As I'm standing on the ground looking at all the layers of the dirt, I can see a lot of infiltration happening. Infiltration is when some, not all, of the precipitation enters the ground and starts trickling through the layers of the dirt. As it is going, through the layers, the water is getting filtered. When it reaches the bottom, the water is filtered enough to be said to be fresh water. This is what we drink from. Well, this is definitely a dirty task. I'll hand it back to Doris while I dig deeper for the next segment. Well, Robert, I'm standing on Mount Shan where something really phenomenal is happening. Right here is something called runoff. Yes, folks, runoff. If you do not know what runoff is, it is precipitation that runs off into a larger body of water without going into the ground. Right now, the precipitation is running off a mountain and it will eventually go into an ocean or a large body of water. Let's run down to Robert in the aquifer. Robert? Thanks, Doris. Right now, I'm floating underwater in the Sparrow Aquifer. This is where the water from the infiltration goes. This water is good enough to drink. This water can be extracted through a pipe that brings the water back up for people to drink. Let's float over to Doris. Doris? Thanks, Robert. I'm also at the Sparrow Aquifer witnessing discharge. Discharge is a movement of water out of the ground. I'm here in the aquifer where the water is moving to a pond. How do all the things we have talked about happen, you may ask? Let's talk to Robert about this. Robert? So, Robert. I was wondering back at the pond, how do all these things happen? Well, Doris, it's as simple as three things. Convection, conduction, and radiation. Convection is the transfer of heat from one place to another by the movement of fluids. What about conduction, Doris? Well, Robert, conduction actually happens quite often. While you were at the top of the heating up a pot of water on stoves, I'll tell you about how conduction plays a role in that. When you first put the pot on the stove, the burner is still turning on. When the burner gets hot, its heat transfers to the bottom of the pot. This then heats up the pot and enables you to cook something delicious, like noodles. 
The only thing I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around is radiation. Could you help me out, Robert? Of course I can, Doris. Thanks, Robert. Radiation is heat traveling in the form of waves or rays. Sounds pretty simple. For example, when you are sitting in the car and the sunlight is streaming onto your leg, your leg starts to get hot. That, that actually does really happen. Mm -hmm. It does this because the radiation is confined to one area and is not able to escape. This happens with anything, not just your leg. Do you get it now? Yeah. We had a sports news from last night coming up. It was a pretty exciting game, so we better wrap it up. The water cycle is a truly amazing thing. I'm Doris Reagan. And I'm Robert Horace. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week when we talk about the layers of the atmosphere. Have a good evening.